Thank you, folks. Uh, so I'm uh, Andy Randall. Um, most of you may know me as an organizer of uh, rejects, but I have a day job, and uh, one of those in one of those aspects of my day job, I'm product manager working on a project called Flat Car Container Linux, which I have talked about at previous uh, rejects. Um, so this is pitched as an update to share kind of where we've come with the project um, since we last talked. Um, but first of all, for those of you who've uh, not, not familiar with the concept of a container Linux, um, really there's, it, it's, it's quite different from a traditional Linux, which is designed for general purpose workloads. It's really designed specifically as a, a host OS for running containers. So it has the minimal set of things you need to run containers. Uh, it runs on an immutable file system, which has all sorts of maintenance and security advantages. Uh, it comes with automatic updates. And it comes with a declarative provisioning model, which is very similar. You know, in the cloud native world, we use the declarative provisioning for our applications, for our clusters. You can do this for your hosts as well. Um, where flat car came from actually uh, goes back a long way. In fact, um, all the way back to Chrome OS, Google had a great idea of how do you make desktops really uh, simple and um, you know, with this immutable and automatic updating capabilities. Core OS turned that into a, a, uh, an OS for servers. And then uh, when Core OS was acquired by Red Hat, uh, the team at Kinfolk decided to create flat car as a friendly fork of Core OS in case maybe one day the original core OS might get uh, end of life, which ended up happening pretty quickly. Um, and so Flat Car continued as an independent project compatible with and taking forward the original core OS container Linux. Um, one of the things that happened a couple of years ago is that original team at Kinfolk got acquired by Microsoft. And uh, around that same time, Microsoft said, look, we really want to drive this to be much more of a community-driven project. And we've really kind of taken it from being something that was very much kind of uh, driven by Kinfolk to, to really being much more open to embracing the community around Flatcar, which is, has really grown as we'll um, talk about. But uh, the, one of the main development areas has been simplifying and opening up the build system and making that accessible to, um, uh, to new developers, as well as opening up our processes, um, chat groups, uh, in, in investing in things like um, you know, monthly office hours, so putting time into those to really um, share what's happening on the project and allow users to come into the community a lot easier. Um, key thing up here on the top right, uh, we have submitted Flatcar uh, for um, consideration by the uh, TOC in CNCF as an incubating a project. So we're going through the due diligence there. Um, that all looks positive, uh, but obviously there's a lot, lot that we have to go through. But um, you know, we're, we're comfortable with the CNCF as a home for flat car. I'm very excited to be going through that process. Um, just to share, give you some idea of the kind of momentum and velocity around the project, um, I know when Kinfolk was acquired by Microsoft, there was a lot of concerns about will we continue to, um, you know, continue to develop the project, continue to have the team working on it. I can say we've doubled down on it. We're doing as much work as ever, you know, more work than ever, um, and we have we've attracted a lot of contributors from the community who are, you know, and it's not a huge amount of um, of the code, but you know. A, PRs here for a document, bit of documentation issues, all of those kind of things are all, there's quite a bit of activity happening on the GitHub. Um, in terms of what's actually been going on in the project, a, a, a lot of stuff over the last, probably most of this has been over the last um, 18 months or so, updating the kernel, um, we retired some old stuff, we really simplified the SDK, added a LTS capability, a whole bunch of features as you can see. I'm pretty excited about the ARM64. We've seen a lot of interest in that, particularly from the cloud native community. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so really a, a modern and, um, uh, you know, and continuing project. Uh, big ecosystem, it runs everywhere. We may be Microsoft, but we're not focused on Azure. One's great on Azure as well, um, but also everywhere else. We see a lot of uptake in the community. Um, you can see the growth here in, so in terms of our Update server, we see over 50,000 um, end nodes connecting to it, but that's a small estimate of the total number that's actually out there. Um, going ahead, uh, we've got an active roadmap, a um, lot of security things. Um, biggest thing here is introducing SysX as a way of making flat car more extensible and composable uh, and uh, enabling users to build versions of it more easily with custom sets of packages. And that is it. Thank you very much.